I'm turning 24 in a few weeks and that's crazy because that means that I'll officially be in my mid-20s and I've never had a boyfriend before. Some people have been super surprised by this, but I think that it's pretty common in my circle. My circle is mostly Asians, specifically Chinese, Christians, or both Christians and Asians. And I think that with those combination of traits or even just those traits individually, deter people from getting into relationships, especially when they're young. Those are definitely two factors that play a role in why I haven't had a serious relationship before. Another reason is that my parents didn't really let me date until after college. I know that I was definitely not allowed to date in high school and younger. The topic was never really brought up in college, but it was pretty much implied or assumed that I would focus on my academics, focus on studying and not get distracted by relationships. There were definitely a number of times that I wish that I was allowed to date and looking back now even, there are a few people who I wish that we had given it a go because I wonder what would have came out of that. But also in hindsight, I'm glad that I wasn't allowed to date because I didn't go through breakups, I didn't go through heartbreak and that saved me a lot of time and a lot of tears. I'm also grateful that I've never had a boyfriend before because in one video I talked about how I was rejected by a guy that I had met online. We went on one date and that lasted a few hours. So I only knew this person for a few hours yet that rejection made me upset and disappointed for a whole two weeks. For me to take that much time to get over something as small as that, I can't imagine how long it would take me to go through a breakup. I don't know how much time I would need to move on with my life had I been in a serious relationship and that relationship didn't end well. There are definitely things that you can learn from breakups and past relationships, but honestly, I hope that I don't have to go through that. In today's society, the mentality around dating is that you should try out as many different people as possible so that you know what you like and what you don't like and you know what you want and don't want in your partner. I don't really find that necessary. Ideally, I would only have one boyfriend that would become my husband. I don't feel the need to date around because what I want in a guy is pretty much outlined by an external source. It's outlined by my faith. I want someone who's a Christian, who follows Jesus, and with that trait, there are a lot of characteristics that are assumed from that. Some of those traits are having integrity, being honest, valuing family, and working on become the best version of yourself. Maybe that sounds a little bit vague because I think that that's what the majority of the population would want. Another reason why I don't think that it's necessary to date around to know what you want and don't want is because you can judge whether this person is someone you would want as a partner without giving them the title of boyfriend or girlfriend. I think being friends with this person and kind of observing them during this period of time is enough to let you know whether this person is someone that you see yourself with and whether this person is someone that you would want as your long-term partner. Some of you might be able to relate to this. When you're in college or when you're in school in general, it's expected that you only focus on your schoolwork, only focus on your academics, but once you graduate, you are somehow expected to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It's as if someone was supposed to appear out of thin air or fall from the sky on the day you graduate. And if you don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, all of your aunties and your uncles are now your unofficial matchmakers. They're sending you pictures of random people asking you if you find them attractive and if you would be interested in meeting up with them. For me, I'm not opposed to it. I think that it might be safer than going on dating apps and looking for people that way. I also know that they have good intentions. They are just trying to help out in their own ways, but there is pressure to find someone and to get married. I'm basically 24 and that's 
considered young in today's society, but compared to my parents' generation, I am a little bit older. My mom's generation got married in their early 20s, some even late teens, and they had their first kid when they were in their early 20s. I recently came across this video by Daily Wire called Why You Should Get Married When You're Young. One point that they made was that if you get married young, you get to grow up with this person. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. Another point was that getting married young forces you to grow up and become an adult. Right now, as someone who is living at home and still in school, I kind of feel like an overgrown child. In the Chinese culture, and I've heard from others that this applies to most cultures besides American culture, it's pretty common for children to stay with their parents and live with their parents and only move out after they get married. So it's not an uncommon thing. It's not really looked down upon in my culture. But because I still live at home and I haven't really started my new career yet, the environment I'm in is very similar to the environment that I was in while I was in high school and even middle school. My responsibilities are pretty similar. The lack of difference in the environment makes me not as independent, not as mature as I would like to be. So I think that it's very true that if you were to get married young and you start your own family, live by yourself, you would definitely be forced to grow up faster because of the responsibilities that you would have to assume. I did think that this video made getting married young sound a bit idealistic. People who get married young do not always work out. Going back to my mom's generation, her circle consists of people in their early 50s, mid 50s, late 40s, and all their kids are now pretty much all grown up. But some couples have gotten divorces even though they got married young and raised a number of children together. There are couples who aren't officially divorced because divorce is still not as widely accepted as is with American culture, but they live as if they're divorced. And then there are couples who still live together, but they get into arguments so often that they try to avoid each other as much as possible. So even though I'd say that getting married young is a great thing. It doesn't always work out. It's not always rainbows and sunshine as this video made it sound like, at least to me. I would love to get married young and younger me thought that I would be married by now, but I think that getting married young is not possible for everyone. I also romanticize the idea of a relationship. Coming from a culture that doesn't really talk about dating much, my idea of relationships were very much influenced by popular culture. It was influenced by TV shows and Korean dramas and Chinese dramas. And those are not very realistic portrayals of what a relationship looks like in real life. In the movies, it seems like a relationship is super easy. If two people have a lot to talk about, if they love spending time with each other, then it seems like they will never get into any arguments. It seems like if their relationship is easy, then it's meant to be. I know that in real life, a relationship takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time. I also romanticize the idea of marriage and having kids. I would love to have matching family outfits and to go on family vacations and take family pictures on the beach during sunset. But I know that raising kids Raising a family is a lot harder than it might seem like on the surface. Right now what I'm doing is to sit and pray and wait on the Lord's timing. It's difficult for me to sit and do nothing because my mentality is that God helps those who help themselves. So for me, I feel the need to put in my own effort and to meet God along the way. That was the reason why I gave dating apps a chance because I felt like there were no options in my real life. So giving dating apps a chance was a way for me to put in my effort and hoping that God would meet me through that somehow, if that makes sense. Since my experience with online dating hasn't been working out, I will take a break from it. I don't know if I will go back on or maybe there will be someone in real life that will come up, maybe one of my aunts or uncles will find 
meet a match somewhere. I'm also working on myself and trying to be more comfortable with my insecurities or things that make me insecure or changing things about myself so that I won't have those insecurities. I think that by not being in any serious relationships in the past, God is saving me for that special someone and I don't know when I'll meet him or whether I've met him yet, but I will trust in his timing. Thank you for listening. If you're still listening, I hope you stay safe and stay healthy and I'll see you next time.